No, I mean, you graduated now from Texas Western. Uh, you get drafted uh, in, the, in, the, in the Major League Baseball draft by the Houston Colts 49ers, which is 45. what? 45. I'm sorry, they were called in those days. And they offered you a bonus to sign, and you turned it down. Uh, I did for, you, you, you didn't turn it down? I did. I was, I was My gonna, grandmother did. Oh, I was going to say because in those days, as little money as you said you had, so uh, old mama made the decision. Yeah, back in those days, I was, I was a youngster. Uh, you, you had to be 21 years old to be signing contracts at least, mm -hmm. and, and you had to have your parents to sign. Mm -hmm. And I, I was so happy because they were sending me to, to Modesto, California, Class C, and then Rusty Staub was the first baseman out there. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Rusty, yeah, Rusty had just signed for a $100,000 bonus, okay? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, we're going to send him out. We could send him to Class C, maybe. Back in those days, we had A, B, C basketball, baseball, you know, minor league baseball. I was excited about that. So I had old Thurman Tucker. He was the pro scout at the time. And we went over to, to the house to get it signed. And my mom said, you're going to be a senior next year? I said, yes, ma'am. Then you're going to school. Mm -hmm. You're going to finish. Mm -hmm. You're going to finish what you started. I said, oh, mama, I can finish. All I have to do is go play in the summer months. I'll come in. And she said, no. <laughs> she ain't hearing it now. No. She said, you, you'll thank me one of these days. I know you had a chance. To, you, if you have a chance to play baseball, and she, this is a religious part of it, she said, if it is, like you come up with the word, if it is to be, mm -hmm. it'll happen. That's what she would say. If it is to be, to be, it's up to me. It's up to me is what you would say. She would say, if it is to be, it'll happen. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen. You ain't going to be able to stop it, she mm -hmm. said. Mm -hmm. you can't, you're not going to start it, nor are you going to stop it. <laughs> I like that. That's what, that was her yeah, word. Yeah, you can't yeah, start yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. She said, hey, he going to start it, and he going to stop it. Uh -huh. So you get your butt back to school. Oh, Lord. That was it. In the case closed. Case closed. Case closed. <laughs> and so, so, you know, talking about opportunities you had uh, to be a professional athlete, uh, so you also are drafted by the San Diego Chargers in football, and you try out for that team. T tell us about well, that. I went as a free agent, and my coach, my high school coach was Andy, I mean, Lou Robustelli, was a good friend of of a guy named Bones Taylor, who was the defensive uh, backfield coach. And see, now I'm a wide out, and they're transferring me. Back in those days, they thought def uh, good basketball players make great defensive cornerbacks. Mm -hmm. There's a guy named Green. That the Cornell played Green. Cornell. I played against Cornell Green. Is that right? Yeah, he yeah. was, a, he was yeah. a, Colorado State. Yeah, no, Utah, Utah State. Utah State. Utah State. Yeah, yeah. I played against him in NIT or my senior year in college. Okay, that's what it all come about. It's about this deal, and, and the coaches knew that, and they said, man, we could get Nolan. He already knows football. He's wide out. He's got great hands, good speed, good size. We won't make a corner. I said, man, i never been on the defensive side of the ball. So I went out to San Diego and was doing really good. I mean, really good. And pulled the hamstring. Mm. And the guy that was my roommate was Dick Westmoreland. It was going to be between me and him. Mm. And of course, when I went down, he makes the team, makes all pro. Yeah. I was better than him. Mm. I thought I was better than him. I said, man, I'm Dick, you ain't making this team. I said, <laughs> I like that. I'd be damned if I don't go down. And that's, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of the coach. He called me in. Uh, and I went on back. I needed 30 hours to graduate. Sid Gilman. Sid Gilman, yeah. yeah he was the coach. Was big time Hall of Fame coach. Yes, Hall Sid of Fame Gilman. coach. They called me and says, uh, Nolan, I know you gave it your best shot. And I stayed around about a week or so trying to, and i never forget Willie Towns. Willie Towns, no, not Willie Towns. He played for Dallas. It was, it was Earl Faison. Mm -hmm. Played at Indiana, the big. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He was a defensive player. He, he came by my room one day and he said, hey, rookie, don't go back out on that field. <laughs> I said, why? He said, because you haven't, you haven't practiced in three or four or five days, man. It cut you. But I could hardly wait to get back because, you know, it's, it's just, I'm, I'm down. We're down to the ballpark mm -hmm. figures. Mm -hmm. I went back. They, he was right. If you get hurt, especially in that time, there's no recovery time. You, know, you got to be ready to play. Ready so, to go, yeah. so once you 
So they released and I came back with the school finished up. Mm -hmm. And that's why, you know, I said that yesterday. I said, you know, when I look at youngsters that are leaving school to go pursue a career, try to make some money, I said it happened to me. I had, at that time, when I left school, I was in getting ready to have, I had two kids, I had a wife, and I had a family to feed. Mm -hmm. and, and going to college wasn't going to help me do that right at that point. Mm -hmm. But if I could go make some money in the pros, then I could be able to do that and go back to school. So when I got cut from the Dallas team, I went back to UTEP, enrolled in uh, 12 hours, got a full-time job, and finished both of them. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. But, but it, it was something that I was trying to make them understand is that the window of opportunity, that window for me in pro sports was this, about this big. But getting a degree, was forever. I can get a degree when I'm 80 if I wanted a mm -hmm. degree. Mm -hmm. You know, if I want to work, then then I, then then I can work. But I can do that forever. Mm -hmm. But to play professional sports, that's a very short window. And once you get through that window, then you still got a short time. Yep. And so so now uh, the the last and final opportunity you had as a professional athlete was in 1967, right. uh, the Dallas Chaparrales uh, 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 in the ABA. They, they come to you and, and, and they offer you, the, the, to, to, was it to double your salary or to match what you were making to come play for the Chaparrales? What they did was they gave me a little bit more than I made as a high school. Uh, at the time I was a JV, I was the junior varsity coach, head coach, I mean the junior varsity coach, just the next year they made me head coach. But uh, there was a deal that was put on the table for me that if I didn't make the team or didn't stay with the team or in any capacity, that a television station by the KDBC TV in Dallas would pay me more than I made as a, as a, as a, as a school teacher. Uh, at that time, I was only making, uh, uh, I think, 31 3200 bucks a year mm -hmm. and they were paying me like six thousand that, that year to do that mm -hmm. I had signed a contract for nine thousand and boy that was mega bucks mm -hmm. that was mega bucks you you the lot oh, yeah. man nine thousand it's like wow so anyway uh, that's what happened and then once we went through preseason, and the games that we played was Larry Brown and Doug Moore, and those guys were playing. Doug Moore, yeah. Yeah, they were playing with New Orleans. Mm -hmm. And for a matter of fact, that's the team here mm -hmm. that was here at the time. And uh, we traveled together in the bus. Matter of fact, they weren't feeding us either when we went to places in Texas. And, and uh, that's why I always liked Larry, because they had a deal where we were going to have to go in the back. I didn't get out the bus. Andy got out and then he came back and said, hey man, don't get Andy was on that team too. Andy Scott. Uh -huh. And he, Larry yeah. Brown you're talking about. Yeah, but Larry Brown was on the New Orleans team. He was on the New Orleans, Andy yes. Uh -huh. was with Dallas. Mm -hmm. And so uh, we had to, we, they weren't going to serve us, so hell, we drove to another little town to see if they'd get some food. Mm -hmm. But that's, that's what happened there. And then I pulled that same hamstring that haunted me in, 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 in uh, San Diego. Now, yeah. Before the beginning of exhibition season, I pulled it again. And I went and played on it. I played the openings. We had the opening game against them. I played like three games on it. I couldn't move. And so uh, I wasn't able to make the squad. Same thing happened. You know, and it's funny when I'm, and I stopped to think. She was right. She said, if it's going to be, it's going to be. Mm -hmm. I had no. I said, she said, what are you going to play? I said, I don't know. What sport will you be playing in the pros? Mm -hmm. I said, I don't know. Uh, anyone that gives me the opportunity to win. I said, one thing for sure, I don't know many people who have signed contracts for three pro sports. Yes. Different yes, sports. Yes, yes. I said, at least, I mean, that to me is a hell of an accomplishment. Just to be able to say, hey, I had a shot at this. I can sit out and talk baseball with you. I can sit down and talk basketball with you, and I can sit down and talk football with you, and know what I'm talking about because I didn't play them all, coached them all, and I said so. I, so I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of guys seen it and watched it on TV, but they ain't really participated in it. Mm -hmm. So, but that. <laughs>